Hi, and welcome back to Expert Maths Tutor. So today we're going to be looking at direct and inverse proportion. Now, I really like these questions. I think these are one of the easy wins on an exam. Uh, I think they're the sort of question where if you practice these 10 times, you're going to be guaranteed the marks for the exam. One of the reasons for that is they generally only ever ask the question in this format. They're not going to hide it in amongst some other question and you're unsure what to do. Generally, and you don't quote me on this, but nine times out of 10, they're just going to word it like this. It means you're going to know exactly what to do. And it means you should be able to get all the marks if you practice these a good number of times. Now, this does come up towards the back of the paper. So it's often considered to be a sort of what would be considered what, like a seven, maybe a high six or seven question. But I think even if you're going for a five, you, you should be able to access this question. It should be able to get you those extra marks. So how do we tackle them? Well, we're always told it generally like this. So y is directly proportional to the square of x. Now it doesn't have to be y and x. Could be p is directly proportional to the square of r. Could be z is directly proportional to the cube of p. It doesn't really matter what the numbers and letters are. The way we access it is the same. So I just want to do a little bit of a recap of graphs before we start this. And you might be thinking, wondering why, but some of you may know that when we talk about directly proportional in terms of a graph, it means a straight line through the origin. So that would mean if I plotted my y against my square of x, against my x squared, I'd have got a straight line through the origin. Now, again, we know, or we've done previously, that y is mx plus c. That's your equation for a straight line graph, where m is how steep the line is, is the gradient, and c is where it crosses the y-axis. Now, here, there is, it, doesn't, it crosses the y-axis at zero, so c would be zero, so that would go. So we're just left with the equation, y equals mx. So if I find the gradient, if I know two points and I know the gradient, I can refer, whenever I know y, I can find x. So I could just go, oh, why is that? And there's x. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're just not going to do it using a graph. But that's kind of where it comes from. So uh, let me clear the board and we'll get started with the question. So always works the same. We have here, y is directly proportional to the square of x. That means y equals some constant, which we're going to call k. y equals some constant k multiplied by x squared. So if it had been p is directly proportional to the cube of r, we'd have written p equals k times r cubed. We just put whatever it's told us in the question there. So that's the first step. Step two, we put in the numbers that it's given us in this bit. So it says when y is 36, x is 3. So we just put them in. We put 36 instead of a y equals our k times by 3 squared. Now we just need to solve this to find what k is. So we find that 36 is k times by 9. We divide both sides by 9. That gets rid of that. So we find that 36 divided by 9 is 4. So 4 equals k. Now we know k. We put that back into here. So that 4 goes back in instead of our k. And we find that our equation is y is 4 x squared. So now we've got this equation, that could be the end of the question. It could have just said find an equation for y in terms of x, in which case you're done. But in this case, we want to find y when x is 5. So now I can find y for any value of x. I can find x for any value of y. So find y when x is 5. We just use this equation and put x as 5 in. So we find that y is 4 times 5 squared so y is 4 times by 25, so y equals 100. And there it is. We've answered that entire question, potentially five marks in the bag in the exam. Practice a load of those, get, get some past papers up, have a go at a load of those questions. You'll find they are an absolute banker for the exam. Now we'll look at inversely proportional, which is very slightly different. Okay, so inversely proportional. I've got another question up on the board and it looks very, very similar to the one we just did. This time we've got y is inversely proportional to the square root of x. Okay, just to show you some slightly different numbers. So now it's told us when y is five, x is four, find x when y is two. So very, very similar in style to the previous question. So how's inversely proportional different? Well, it's pretty minor. 
Now we say y equals k. So starting exactly the same, but now instead of k times by our thing here, it's k divided by it. So now it would be y equals k divided by the square root of x. Now we tackle the question in exactly the same way. So we're going to put our numbers in, we're going to find our k, that'll give us an equation, then we'll find x for that y value. Okay, so first step, find our k. Put our values in, 5 equals k divided by the square root of 4. So 5 equals k divided by 2. We times both sides by 2. That gets rid of that, and we find that 10 equals k. Done. Now, again, pop that back into there, and I find that y equals 10 divided by the square root of x. So we were doing exactly the same as last time. We use our values, pop them in. The only difference, y equals k divided by the thing for inversely proportional. So now I've got my equation. Could be you stop in there. Could be it just says find an equation. We now need, though, need to find x when y is 2. So just put those values in. So y now is 2. That equals 10 divided by the square root of x. So now I need to get my x's on the bottom. I need to get that on the top. So I'll times both sides by root x. That cancels it from that side. So I've got 2 times root x is 10. Divide both sides by 2. Gets rid of that. So 10 over 2 gives me that root x is 5. Now how do I get rid of the square root? I, time, I square it. So I square both sides and I find that x is 5 squared. So x is 25. So it's just a case of finding that value of k first. Then you're just pulling those numbers in and it's pretty simple algebra. If you need to practice the algebra, go back, look at my algebra videos, brush up on that. But those, direct and inverse proportion, should be some nice easy wins for the exam. Practice a load of those questions and you should be good to go.